Greetings and welcome. You're listening to Planet Brilla, your psionics Digerati podcast, hosted by Air Doctor Von Frillock. It is I. Um, listen, we're going to talk about wonderful things tonight. Wonderful, wonderful things. Luminous layers around all human beings, all animals, all objects, plants and things throughout the entire universe. There is this wondrous etheric energy called the aura. Welcome, seekers of the unseen. Welcome to a new episode of this Verloc podcast. So, tonight we embark on a journey into luminous worlds of auras, and this episode is the unveiling of the secrets of aura awareness. Auras are those radiant halos of energy that envelop every living being. Even plants. In fact, I had my first experience uh, seeing auras around plants. Um, these were around the vines uh, growing up the side of the house. And I perceived this aura is a, a very gentle and uh, subtle glove of translucent energy surrounding these vibrant plants. These auras have captivated the human imagination and curiosity for the centuries. They are the subtle signatures of our innermost emotions and spiritual states visible only to those who know how to look. In this episode, we'll peel back the veil on these colorful emanations, offering beginners a guide to sensing and understanding the unseen energy that surrounds us all. So, tune in. I only ask that you open your mind and prepare to illuminate the layers of your own aura. And as always, remember, keep the magic high. That's what we like to say in all of our podcasts, is to keep the magic high, because that's so important. That's what binds us all together, as practitioners, as students, and explorers of the mysterious. All right, my curious listeners. Auras are the ethereal fields that envelop all living beings. A shimmering tapestry of energy that is as unique as a fingerprint. These subtle bodies of light have been acknowledged across various cultures and spiritual traditions, often seen as a manifestation of one's life force or the chi, the prana, and as we call it, the real. The concept of auras can be traced back to ancient civilizations where they were depicted in art and uh, scripture even, uh, surrounding deities and saints with halos of the sacred light. In the Western esoteric tradition, the aura is considered a multi-layered sphere, more like an eggshell, really, composed of an energy that extends well beyond the physical body, reflecting one's emotional, mental, and spiritual well-being. This Theosophists, for instance, described it as an astral body composed of various colors, each hue revealing different aspects of an individual's character and their health. Overall well-being, all perceived within this aura of shimmering colors. For example, a bright, clear, yellow aura might indicate intellectual stimulation, perhaps creativity, and indeed optimism. 
while a muddy red could suggest anger or frustration. Black, deep depression. Gray, perhaps malice or illness. And the gray color is often referred to as negative green because it is on the opposite uh, spectrum from green. Auras are indeed far from being static. We always seem to imagine that the aura is like this colored field surrounding a person. And uh, like in a special photography, uh, the aura can be captured and you see some rainbow colors. But indeed, um, in actuality, they fluctuate with our thoughts, our feelings and experiences. A person who has just engaged in rigorous exercise, they may exhibit a vibrant red aura pulsating with vitality, whereas a meditative state might be accompanied by a cool blue or perhaps a serene violet color. To illustrate, consider the case of a healer who perceives their auras. They might observe a patient's aura as perhaps dull, a smoky hue, indicating uh, the energetic blockage or perhaps an imbalance. Through their practice, they aim to cleanse and restore the aura to its natural luminosity, thereby promoting physical and uh, emotional healing. Understanding the nature of auras opens a vast window into the unseen world of energy that connects all living things. It's a profound reminder that we are more than just physical beings. We are more than these material things. We are vibrant, luminous beings constellations of energy constantly interacting with the environment and with one another right keep the magic high well there are practical applications i must tell you for everyday life in the realm of practical sonics which is my specialty maintaining a vibrant and protective aura is essential for both the physical and the metaphysical well-being. Here are some simple yet effective practices that can be incorporated into daily routines to cleanse and fortify one's aura. Grounding is established by grounding oneself to earth's energy so you stand barefoot on the ground visualize roots extending from your feet into the earth and visualize drawing up stabilizing energy now this practice helps to discharge excess energy while establishing a solid foundation for your aura and indeed for meditation we move on to more visualization to strengthen the aura. Your aura is already a protective field, but it can do so much more. Picture in your mind a bright light emanating from your core at your solar plexus, expanding to form a protective eggshell bubble around you. This energy field, this light, can be any color that resonates with you, each carrying its own unique properties. Blue for calm, green for healing, or violet for spiritual uh, protection. As I've said before on other episodes, uh, blue tends to really protect the emotional self, Whereas violet is a color that protects the nervous system or promotes calm and removes anxiety. 
Now then, there are a number of cleansing techniques. I won't cover all of them, but I name just a few for you this evening so that you can take something with you and begin your journey. Engage in these cleansing techniques such as smudging with a sage or a palo santo which are believed to clear negative energies and they do just don't forget the corners in your home and the closets clear out those negative energies control your environment now alternatively for yourself a salt water bath or even a shower can serve as a physical and energetic cleansing washing away the unwanted energies from your aura try it you may notice on a day where you're particularly perplexed by something or irritated perhaps someone has intentionally or unintentionally robbed you the wrong way take a shower and do a deep cleansing and you'll notice your mentality is restored. Meditation, I cannot emphasize enough, and its affirmations, these are essential to good psychic and uh, spiritual and uh, physical health. Regular meditation can help to align and purify your aura. And you should do this regularly. So, you may incorporate affirmations such as, I am surrounded by the light and protection. And this reinforces the integrity of your energy field, which is already uh, performing at its ordinary best. We might call it the default state. It's performing by default to protect you. But this is reinforcing the integrity of this energy protection. I am surrounded by the light and protection. Now, in various forms of energy work, we might take up learning Reiki or Qigong. Uh, these practices involve manipulating the flow of energy within and around the body, promoting balance and vitality in your aura. This is good for you. Your diet and exercise is important as well. It can have a profound impact on your energy field, your subtle analogy. Uh, perhaps I meant to say your subtle anatomy. Uh, foods which are rich in life force energy, uh, such as fresh fruits, organics preferably, and vegetables, uh, this nourish your aura. Well, physical activity helps to circulate energy uh, effectively. I might part with you uh, or impart uh, some wisdom uh, from the ancients of Arcana or Arca and the Arcan teaching, which is that if you are to eat these fresh fruits and vegetables, uh, chew them, absorb the juices in your mouth, let this flow under your tongue, over your tongue, the gums and the teeth, and attempt not to swallow until the flavor is nearly gone. The reason for this is that the real and the real energy of the fruit is first absorbed through the mouth, uh, the, uh, the tongue, and the gums and teeth. Uh, what goes down the pipe into your stomach is essentially uh, rubbish and uh, It's an old occult wisdom I thought you should know so if you want to be healthy get the most out of your food uh, Masticate your food and take your time eating Now um, there are a number of routines uh, You should incorporate such as meditation and affirmations as I've mentioned Imagine for a moment, uh, to be practical, if you are a writer or a computer programmer, 
Yeah, you spend hours upon hours at the desk in front of your computer, your aura is becoming stagnant from the lack of movement and the stress of the various deadlines and so on. Uh, by incorporating a morning routine of grounding, which I've mentioned, uh, grounding with the earth, and a midday visualization perhaps on your break, you have a 15 minute break at work, you know, take a break to visualize your aura, and then an evening meditation with the affirmations, you know, I am surrounded by the light and protection, and they can maintain for you, these routines, a clear and a vibrant aura, enhancing uh, your creativity and uh, your focus. So these are very practical. Uh, by integrating these practices into your daily life, you can ensure that your aura remains a luminous shield. Safeguarding you from the negative influences and, of course, enhancing your overall energy. Right. Well, you have to keep the magic high. You have to do your routine uh, to stay at your best. Now, here's some fun. I want to tell you a joke. Because, you know, when you're learning all of this, uh, it can be uh, sometimes complicated. And it's good to have a little fun. Well, imagine for a moment a man. He's deeply engrossed in a thrilling werewolf novel. And this is exemplary of how the mind influences the aura. So his imagination is running wild with the images of moonlit transformations. And as he reads, he unknowingly is projecting a vivid aura shaped into the form like uh, like a fierce creature from his story like a werewolf now enter his clairvoyant friend <laughs> who decides to surprise him with a visit so she walks into the room her aura reading senses kick in on a high alert only to be greeted by this startling sight of a wolfish figure looming over her friend and for a split second her heart's racing and she nearly drops her crystal pendant in shock right now you know of course regaining her composure she burst into laughter and they share a good laugh realizing that it's just the uh, energetic residue of her friend's uh, intense reading session no doubt uh, they share a good laugh, and um, he sheepishly uh, bookmarks the page, uh, promising to stick to perhaps uh, less hair-raising literature when expecting company. <laughs> well, it reminds us, this tale, that while auras can reveal much about our inner state, they can also lead to some perhaps amusing mix-ups, especially when fiction spills into our energetic reality. Now as for my own personal story here, I encountered uh, perhaps a symbolic werewolf and here's the tailing of this tale. <laughs> so, the story I have to tell you is um, perhaps a little embarrassing so I may leave out certain details but uh, the gist of this is that I was uh, visiting a friend's house and something profound happened. I found myself at a late night gathering at a friend's house, a friend of a friend. First time I've been there, well, physically, when nature called. I had to run to the little boy's room, so... I asked the host if I could use the bathroom and they pointed down the hallway and said on the right, many doors down this hallway. So venturing down this dimly lit corridor, I reached the bathroom, flicked on the light and closed the door. To my surprise, there was an adjoining door next to the toilet. Uh, and uh, suddenly, without a warning, <laughs> Uh, suddenly, without warning, 
the door swung open and this massive wolf-like dog stood on his hind legs pressing against the door snarling and snapping his jaws at me and I desperately breast against the door calling for the owner to secure the pet please come get your werewolf <laughs> for a moment I was convinced I was face to face with the werewolf well the particular twist is this just a couple of nights prior I had dreamt of flying down to a house on a cul-de-sac attempting to converse with this beautiful woman um, in this dream who seemed guarded or perhaps even held captive I believe she was held captive by this hostile werewolf creature and uh, no matter how hard I tried uh, desperately to approach I could not get past this werewolf creature so in reality back in the real world when I had arrived at this eerily familiar house on the cul-de-sac and later encountered a large wolf dog emerging from the darkness and the cold well I was filled with a sense of dread and other astonishment. The experience here underscores the mind's power to foresee events, although often represented by primitive archetypes rather than actual fact. In my dream, the werewolf was, in reality, a very large and uh, hairy dog, capable of standing on its hind legs, albeit. <laughs> well, there are many adventures in the world of the mysterious. But before closing this evening, I'd like to recommend some of our books. As we draw tonight's episode to this close, I impart some age-old wisdom uh, before uh, telling you about my books. And these are for safeguarding your sanctuary, your personal home, from both the earthly pest and the uh, ethereal intruders, for which there are a variety of kinds. Here are a few tried and true tips. Now, for the critters, peppermint, it's a natural deterrent. It can keep uh, peppermint oil yes it keeps ants marching away in your house uh, simply dab a few drops along entry points or mix with water and use as a refreshing spray the cinnamon essential oil this is aromatic uh, a, an a, aromatic essence uh, not only pleasing to the senses but also a formidable foe against uh, reptiles, rodents, insects, snakes. And I know about that. I've lost a uh, cat and dog to uh, snake bites, so it's serious. If you want to keep the snakes away, use the cinnamon oil. A little goes a long way in creating a barrier that they won't cross. Now then, for the unseen, for those evil and dark spirits that sometimes find their way to your abode. Use the black sea salt. Sprinkle a pinch here and there. Draw a line of this potent mineral around the thresholds of your personal quarters. Now it's said to create this protective shield, turning away malevolent spirits, goblins, and imps with its purifying properties guard every portal in your home black sea salt remember whether you're warding off ants or apparitions the key is your intention infuse these ritual actions with a clear and focused intent and a harnessed will from your solar plex energy chakra and you'll fortify 
You're hung with an impenetrable aura of protection. Yes, indeed, objects and places also have their aura, which is known also as a personal aura, uh, an atmosphere. Every place has an atmosphere. Now then, um, my books and magical items for you, lords and ladies, I have for sale for you to help ward off the boogeyman and even draw romance and uh, money your way while well, you're at this. And so check it out. We've got recommended books for beginners. You're interested in the aura and energy work. And you can do all of this from your armchair at the comfort of your own home. I recommend starting with the ebook, Keep the Magic High. Uh, this book outlines the magical terms, a lifestyle, philosophy, and overall methodology of everything from uh, meditation to the more advanced psychotronics and psionics, uh, making this an excellent starting point for the beginner. Additionally, you might find the audiobook Fantastic Facilitators quite enlightening. It focuses on creating artificial servitor spirits uh, that can manifest great results to improve the quality of your life, which aligns very well with aura and energy work. And so you can send these fantastic facilitators into the future to smooth your road of life. Now for hands-on approach, I recommend my actual magical object, the Miraculous Prayer Board Mini. And this is a very powerful tool for working with your chakras and your aura and many other things. It comes with an operator manual and there is also a trio of real life practical guides to help you more and more with this wonder work and manifestation. The Miraculous Prayer Board allows users to harness their psychometric energy to bring about positive, positive change in your life. Now, these resources should provide a solid foundation for any of you looking to explore the intersection of aura awareness and the silence. So, keep the magic high. Join the Verlac Club for deeper discounts and other magical perks. Verlac Club, where witches and wizards keep the magic high. Good night, lords and ladies, and thank you for joining me. Air Doctor commands.